Hello and welcome to this video in the Google Ads training series. Today, we'll be talking about bidding and optimization for your search terms. The biggest draw of the Google Ads platform is the reach and the pay for performance billing. While you only get billed for clicks to your website, there needs to be a balance between ad quality and search term intent that you need to strike. Before we get started with the training, I wanted to remind everyone to subscribe to the channel. I put out a video every single day to build your knowledge in advertising, marketing, Shopify, and dropshipping. I do this absolutely free of charge. I also host a live call every Thursday night for our Facebook group where I give away a one hour consulting call. By subscribing, you are helping this channel reach more people and build out the revenue required to keep producing these videos for you. Thank you so much for clicking through. I hope you enjoy the video. If you're only charged for clicks, why does optimization matter? Add quality score. The higher the quality score for a particular search term, the more likely you are to be placed higher at a lower bid than somebody else. While Google has never given up the exact equation for the quality score, we have to be able to infer some of the major drivers of when a specific smaller bid is accepted over a larger one. Historic click-through rates are weighed heavily in the calculation as the amount of people clicking on your link gives a correlation to how relevant your content is. This relevance is the real quality ranking factor, but we can only gather information on relevance based on user activity. If you want cheaper, higher quality clicks, you have to optimize. With your search campaigns, there are two very distinct sections for search, keywords and terms. Terms are the exact terms that were used at the query level where your ad was shown. Terms are the keywords selected that you want to show up for. You can always maneuver around maximum budgeted CPC at the keyword level. Search terms are a great way to find hidden words that help you optimize your search campaign better. Let's say one of our keywords is sugar free and we start by doing a phrase match where we show up for every query that has sugar free inside of it. That's great. You start compiling data, you notice that you're spending a large portion of your ad campaign on searches that are related to sugar-free and gluten-free. The search term gluten-free and sugar-free cake recipes. It's taken up 40% of your budget over the previous three days and you don't offer gluten-free cake recipes. This is a problem. This is when optimization comes into play. We need to go create negative keywords so that we no longer show up when the phrase gluten-free is used in conjunction with sugar-free. There are three levels of negative matching. Exact, phrase, and broad. In this case, we must use phrase for the search keyword gluten-free, and here's why. If we use exact, we won't ever show up for the query gluten-free. We will show up for the gluten-free desserts. In exact matching, the query must match character for character what is in the negative list in order to not show up. Since we don't offer any gluten-free recipes, we don't ever want to show up when the query includes gluten-free. Then there's this case of broad match. Broad match says that for this keyword phrase, I don't want to show up when one or more of the keywords in the phrase shows up in the query. This means that putting a broad match for gluten free would eliminate any query with the terms gluten, gluten free, or free. But we want to show up for sugar free. That's a problem. We won't show up for any gluten related searches, but since our focus is sugar free, the keyword free shows up in those queries and we wouldn't show up there either. That's why phrase match is so important. We only want to exclude gluten free related queries and not sugar free related queries. The other option, since the word free isn't as required because how would you search for a gluten free recipe? We can always broad match the single keyword of gluten. Gluten is rarely, if ever used outside of the context of being an allergen, so we can safely exclude gluten in search terms and not exclude any search queries for sugar-free. This is not always the case and why I suggest using phrase match. Understanding the value of negative keywords is the first step in optimizing your campaign to ensure that no irrelevant search queries show your ad. If Google suggests to a user a sugar-free recipe in a query that also asks for gluten-free, yet the recipe clearly states that it has gluten in it, you're wasting your money and giving a bad customer experience. On to the idea of increasing and decreasing search keywords. If you have a campaign that has multiple keywords and you find that your conversion rate among the keywords has a huge disparity, you want to funnel more money into the high converting keywords. 
while your first impulse might be to increase the maximum CPC to the high converting keywords, you don't want to pay more for something that is working. Instead, the keywords that are using your budget without the desired results should have a significantly reduced maximum CPC to ensure that you are getting low cost clicks or no clicks due to the lack of competitive bidding. If you aren't competitive on your bid, you will not show up. Simple as that. That's all for today. I hope this helped you understand negative keyword matching and bidding adjustments as they relate to your campaigns. This is only a surface level dive into what can be accomplished by optimization. This is what you need to start. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.